Women during the Joseon dynasty had very different lives than today. In the previous episode, I have explored women in marriage and divorce, inheritance, education, performing ancestral rites, and what women had to wear. I have mostly looked at women from the upper class, the Yangban. I invite you to watch the first episode before watching this one. In this episode, I will look at the lives of female members of the royal family, commoners, entertainers, physicians, and shaman. In the palace lived the king's grandmother, mother, wife, the wife of the heir to the throne, as well as the king's and prince's daughters and concubines. The queen was, of course, the king's wife, and seen as the mother of the nation. The ideal queen-to-be would have an irreproachable family background, be virtuous and pretty. The queen was in charge of the Newe Myongbu. The Newe Myongbu was composed of the king's concubines, court ladies, and palace women. The Wemyongbu consisted of the wives of the civil and military officials, the wives of other royal family members, and the children of the crown prince. Finding a concubine followed a rigid process, similar to the queen. Concubine's children would be selected as heir to the throne if the queen did not have any children. This happened seven times in Joseon history. There was a courting process in place in the palace, and even the queen had to follow it. The dates that she could sleep with the kings were selected in advance. The royal sericulture ceremony, the Chin Jamne, consisted of picking mulberry leaves and weaving. The mulberry leaves would be fed to royal silkworms. The queen would lead this ceremony. She would also lead the Neyon, a royal banquet, where she would bond with her female guests and even talk proper female etiquette. The number one role of a queen was the raising of her children, more importantly, her sons. If she couldn't bear a son, she was expected to raise the son of a royal concubine as her own. If a crown prince was too young to rule, the oldest surviving queen dowager, usually the king's mother or grandmother, would handle the king's affair. When the dowager was in the king's quarters, she would be separated from the rest of the men by a screen. This followed the previously discussed idea of Confucian separation of the sexes. When a crown prince began courting, all women in the kingdom were forbidden from marrying. Women belonging to the commoner and slave classes were usually involved in productive labor, as opposed to the yangban and royal female members. Agriculture, weaving, housework, and childbearing were their main focus. Women weaved clothing for their families as well as for paying their taxes. Clothing was basically a form of currency when came tax time. A very interesting fashion style, if we can call it so, emerged in later Joseon, whereas a woman would expose her breast after giving birth to a son as well as breastfeed him in public. Her duty was carried out. It was a way of showing her pride. Female entertainers or courtesans, kiseng, were mostly from lowborn class and were the property of the state. One particularity of them was that they were the only women who could interact with men from the Yangban class. Some called them the female elite of Joseon. See my video on the kiseng to learn more about them. Female physicians known as uinyo, were responsible for taking care of sick women. Some worked within the palace, and others worked in state-sponsored clinics. 
Male doctors weren't allowed to touch a woman, so female physicians had to disinfect wounds and do acupuncture. Prescriptions could only be made by male physicians. Female physicians also acted as midwives. Interestingly, these women were usually chosen amongst the government slaves or kisang, so their social status stayed low. They could upgrade their social status if they did particularly well as physicians. During Yon Sang-gun's reign, some female physicians were used as female entertainers and called Yakbang Kiseng. Female shamans, Munyo, performed ceremonies called Gut. They were intermediaries between humans and gods. Some of them were allowed to enter the palace and perform royal ceremonies to ward off natural disasters or bring luck to the royal family. Because of Confucianism, female shamans were looked down upon. They were allowed nonetheless to conduct ceremonies for the welfare of the people. Munyo were reputed for their ability to cure diseases. The state forced them to register with local hospitals who tended the lowborn classes. This way, the government could control the shamans. As you can see, the lives of women during the Joseon dynasty was rather difficult if we compare it to modern-day South Korea and the rise of feminism and gender equality. But I feel something important has to be said about Joseon. It lasted more than 500 years. To put it simply, whatever they had going on had to be working for it to last so long. We have to look at women's lives during Joseon relative to its time and the cultures it was influenced by, namely the Ming and Qing empires. Women were restricted in their liberties in Joseon. However, let's not forget that Joseon had a very rigid social structure and each social class had many obligations and restrictions for men as well, although not on the level seen for women. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and leave a thumbs up. Stay tuned for more videos on the history of Korea.